Hi, I'm Laura Garcia, a realtor in Jacksonville, Florida. If you're a homeowner, you've probably been inundated with calls, texts, mail from investors wanting to buy your home. You may have even seen Zillow's new billboards telling you to take the easy way and sell to them. So today we're going to talk about off-market investors and how to tell when an off-market investor may be a good option for you. Real estate investors have been around for a while, whether they're looking for properties to flip or good rentals. But in the last decade, we've seen the birth of a larger Wall Street-based investor called an iBuyer. Popular iBuyers include Open Door, Zillow Offers, and Redfin Now. These companies purchase properties directly from the homeowner. The homeowner then doesn't have to advertise online, have tours, or do repairs in exchange for a cash, as-is, quick-close offer. Sounds great, right? The main thing to remember is that iBuyers are in this market to make money. They are not purchasing this property out of the kindness of their heart to make your life easier. If they could not make money off your home, they would not be buying it. That means that most of their offers are below market value. As a homeowner, you need to decide if you're okay leaving that money on the table and letting the iBuyer profit off of it. These are four things I would do before accepting an iBuyer offer. First, find out the true value of your home. And I'm not talking about this estimate. Remember, Zillow is an iBuyer now. They benefit from undervaluing your home with an online's estimate. I've sold properties for 50,000 above an online's estimate. Talk to three local realtors that know your neighborhood very well. Get their opinion on what they could, you could sell the property for, what repairs would need to be done, and what your net profit would be. So after commissions, after closing costs, how much money would you take home? And then you can actually compare apples to apples with an iBuyer and see the benefits and pluses and which one you would want to go with. Second, figure out what your key motivators are for selling. Are you going through a divorce and just want to unload the property quickly? Are you trying to get top dollar so you can retire or upgrade to a new property? Time and no repairs are the biggest advantages to selling to an iBuyer. If you don't want to do work and you needed the property sold last week, an iBuyer can be a good option. Third, you need to consider what market you're selling in. Right now we are in a very competitive seller's market. Sellers are calling the shots. They're getting cash offers with no inspection contingencies. Even finance buyers are coming to the table with cash out of pocket to pay up above an appraised value. That means that you are likely to get an offer that has some of the perks of an iBuyer, but at a higher rate, and you may even be selling to homeowners rather than big corporate companies. Being in a market like that means that an iBuyer slightly loses its advantage. Now, if you were in a buyer's market, definitely an iBuyer would make the most sense because there's no buyers out there for you. But I would argue that most of these iBuyers are likely going to disappear if we have a 2008 housing crash because, again, they need to make money off this purchase. And lastly, shop around and shop local. What's to say you can only have one iBuyer op option? Talk to Zillow and Open Door. Go find some local investors. Yellowbird is a big one around here. Go see what they're going to offer. I have noticed that local investors sometimes can offer more because they're more hands-on and know the actual market and work that's gonna be needed better than a bigger corporate company that's not local. If you're thinking of an iBuyer, I hope that you find these tips helpful. The biggest thing to remember is your home is your one of your biggest investments. Don't just give it away. If you need help valuing your home to help make the decision on whether to accept an iBuyer offer, feel free to call me.